Hey everyone, this is Mike Glover with part two of setting up a base calibration. Once again, our uh, sample vehicle is a 1994 Mustang convertible. You can see the details of the vehicle specs in the description below. Part two will cover the uh, parameters on the functions tab that you need to um, adjust for a minimal base calibration. Plus, we'll touch upon a couple of optional uh, parameters that you may or may not need to adjust. The first function that we're going to adjust is FN367, injector offset versus battery. This is a flat uh, pulse width adder based on voltage. The factory values on this function for 19 pound injectors will cause anything larger than really even 24, but larger than 24 to uh, deliver too much fuel. Uh, at the same uh, voltage levels. Uh, this could cause hot cranking issues like you know, long cranking to start and having to floor the uh, accelerator to shut off the injectors. Since this combo has uh, 42 pound injectors, we will be reducing it by the ratio of the old injectors, 19 pound, divided by 42, which gives you 0.4524 is what we'll round to. This I have stored memory, and we multiply that by uh, the first Y value, 1.125, gives you 0.51 rounding. And it covers this one also. And you do that for <clears throat> at least through 10 volts. So you can do the entire function but at least through 10 volts. Uh, below that, your vehicle probably won't run anyway. The next function is PID FN337. This is the load to go open loop based on RPM. Now, depending on if you're naturally aspirated or uh, blown uh, turbo or supercharger, uh, you'll use two um, basic functions to, to start with, and you can tweak it a little bit up uh, depending on uh, your load values. But uh, um, for uh, a naturally aspirated setup with head cam intake. So you're gonna list uh, zero out these and set uh, 1500, one of the minimum uh, points that I, I feel like I'll co most commonly go into a wide, wide open throttle or open loop and set that to uh, whatever uh, load point I want and then I'll degradate that, uh, sorry, lower that over uh, a period uh, going to the maximum of 1634, uh, so like 0.45. So uh, beginning at 1500 RPM, it'll go open loop at 0.72% uh, load. And uh, above that, it'll it'll interpolate between 1500 and 1634, uh, gradually lowering that value. Okay, now for a blown application, you see I have set up here, I started 1,500 and incremented up to 4,000, gradually lowering the uh, load point that I go up a loop, and then again setting uh, the maximum RPM to a uh, lower po point that it will interpolate between the 4,000 RPM and the, the max. If you want to be an open loop, 100% uh, of the time, like uh, if you're tuning on your MAF with a wide band, um, you can set uh, the uh, RPM range from all zeros except for the last value uh, and all load to zero. So at any load point, any RPM, you'll be in open loop. The next PID to be adjusted would be the MAF transfer, FN036. When using an aftermarket mass sensor that is matched to a specific size of injector, the manufacturer has reduced the reporting voltage by the same ratio uh, as we used in uh, PID FN367, which is the original injector size divided by the new injector size. In this case, 0 0.4524. Um, Divided by memory recall equals 19.45. It, um, to keep you from having to go through um, each cell individually, uh, you can in turn go with a, um, a factor, so 42 divided by 19, 
gives you 2.21, which is basically a 120%, sorry, 121% increase. So you can use the Richen entire curve and enter 121% in here process, and then you just run through the entire math transfer, getting it uh, well within the ballpark, uh, uh, making the vehicle drivable. Uh, likely you'll have to uh, data log and tweak on the uh, idle cells, uh, which are probably going to be around, average around a volt, so in this range. And um, if um, if you're having idle issues, but your uh, math fuel trims and wideband or wideband um, tells you that everything is okay, then um, you should go through the process to uh, to check and reset the TPS, the throttle stop, and uh, probably the initial timing to to get idling at the uh, lowest uh, point, about 100 RPM below your set point. Uh, and then once you put the spout back in, it should idle nice and smooth. Function we're going to look at, which is kind of an optional uh, function, and really you only adjust if uh, if you're having idle issues. But larger um, um, engine displacements, you know, 408, 460s, so on, um, you don't need as much timing. Uh, the air volume uh, on, on a uh, motor that size usually will compensate for uh, the necessary timing. Uh, so uh, if, if you're having idle issues, you can come here. This is basically a clip um, for the uh, Max Spark. Uh, sometimes it'll, you know, if, the, if it's having idle issues, it will attempt to go much further than it needs to on larger engine displacements, even on some of the small block stuff. I mean, you can you can, you can tweak on it a little bit, but uh, it's generally not not as needed. Uh, once you get into a 347 stroker, you might lower it down, you know, in the mid 30s. But um, you know, just uh, kind of have to kind of work for that. It's just one of those things that you can target. The next function we're going to adjust is FN035. This is the sea level load scaling versus RPM, and is uh, the basic definition for load percentage. This function um, uh, gives the EEC uh, a maximum level of load that can be reached at any RPM. Um, for a natural aspirated setup, this is always generally going to be below 1 uh, or 100% load on power adder, uh, supercharger, turbocharger uh, applications, this can go well above one all the way to two, which is the maximum value that it will allow. Here you see the uh, stock level uh, load scaling function for a 302, and you see it peaks at 82% uh, eight, um, load uh, here at 3,500 RPM. And generally for head cam intake combo, I'm going to add 10 to 15 percent to to these numbers across the board, and maybe shift this number down to three or up to 38 or four, depending on the cam, you know, where where it's supposed to peak at. Um, so these RPM values may get adjusted along with it, but. Uh, generally, uh, I will start with uh, the following function for an actually aspirated setup. This curve. I've added 10 to 12 percent to the load values and um, adjusted the uh, the RPMs slightly to compensate for or to allow for the uh, stage two trig flow cam that's in the in the uh, motor. Here, the function has been adjusted for a uh, setup uh, with a supercharger running, you know, eight, ten, maybe 12 psi max and. Uh, uh, allows for it to uh, um, be tuned basically for naturally aspirated below uh, the the point the boost comes on, which is you know anywhere from 25 to 3,000. You know when you'll start seeing one, two psi, and then it'll it'll go up fairly quickly after that. And then on the last value, I'll I'll put like uh, one or or lower depending on engine displacement and uh, allow for the loss of efficiency above uh, the peak boost. And here uh, you see a curve that's been adjusted more for a uh, turbo, uh, uh, oncoming of turbo boost uh, where it comes on uh, earlier than the, uh, the supercharger and will, will hit peak uh, much earlier than the supercharger and then taper off slightly as, as it goes. 
Um, these are, are good, solid starting points for nationally aspirated uh, super or turbocharged running 8 to 12 PSI, uh, more 8 to 10. But um, the main point on this function is to keep all the values uh, on um, load values on your tables um, within the 100% the load range. So you don't have to go through and rescale all of these. That's my preferred uh, method for uh, for tuning. Uh, it is uh, six one half a dozen other basically to go with the uh, keeping all within 100% load or scaling up to whatever you know load you may want to see. Function FN513 or the wide open file breakpoint versus RPM. <clears throat> is the uh, function that tells the eek at what voltage or in this this case um it's displayed as eight uh sorry uh, a to d counts uh, uh at what point to go to wide open throttle you now the uh, uh factory setting of 642 is like 3.74 volts something something around there um uh, for for most instances i'll just uh change this entire function to a uh, uh, 550 and um, uh, leave it at that. That's a good starting point for nationally aspirated, blown, turbo, whatever. Um, if you'd like, you can uh, come in here and say for a, a turbo or blown application, you could uh, change this to say um, 1850 or up to 2250, 2500, somewhere in there, but uh, I'd probably stick with like 18 or 1750 and drop this down to like 425, 425 for these last two. And then um, that'll, that'll make it go uh, to wide open throttle at that point and uh, help dump in some extra fuel uh, uh, to cool cylinders and, and so on. What we're going to touch upon is. Uh, more optional for nationally aspirated. Uh, generally, I, I just mess with the uh, open loop uh, fuel table for that. As long as your injector and MAF is set correct, that that should cover it. Um, on uh, blown uh, turbo applications, here you'll come in here and lower these values from one, which means no addition. Uh, if you go below one, it's, it starts adding fuel. If you go above one, it leans the fuel at wide open throttle. So you know, like it, uh, you could come in here and set this to uh, 1750, uh, 2500, and say 3500, and gradually drop the um, the uh, multiplier 0 0.95, 0 0.925, 0 0.9, 0 0.875. It's probably a little bit of overkill. But um, that's one way that you can add fuel based on RPM. Um, for turbo, you'd probably come on a little bit sooner. You would still adjust the open loop fuel table, which we'll cover in part three, of course, and um, along with other, other tables that you'll need to adjust. But I uh, hope this has been helpful, and uh, look for uh, part three coming very soon. Thanks.